Hey, what's up guys? Jonathan here. Um, I wanted to go over um, subdividing cylinders, how to create um, good hard edges without getting a bunch of creases. Um, it's uh, something I've kind of been running into a lot lately and I, and I just kind of stopped and I was like, all right, I got to figure this out. You know, what's a good method to, uh, you know, just avoid that when adding edge loops. So what I mean by that is... Um, you know, obviously, like if you're if you're subdividing a box, sorry, oh, that's, there we go. <laughs> if you're subdividing a box, like so, and I'll take a cylinder here for example as well, just to kind of show the difference here. Um, and uh, you know, when you're subdividing a box, it's it's totally cool um, to just have edge loops throughout every corner and this is kind of what I'm talking about usually when you're adding your edge loop you just want to make nice little corner squares you know get that all good to go there um, pretty simple and then you subdivide right and then you got a nice subdivided box and then you can subdivide that as many times as you want you got yourself a nice little little piece there but the problem is when you do that to a cylinder so say you have a kind of a complex shape uh, up on the top and you're you're subdividing things and um, you know so you're essentially adding edge loops on these sides here you know so so normally when you subdivide this it's already round so it's going to maintain that nice roundness um, the problem is is when you start adding these edge loops here to like chamfer this out um, so yeah when you start adding oops, when you start adding these here See, and the thing is, is, is this the cylinder hasn't? It, it's 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 a perfect circle right now. You start adding these loops now. You're adding verts here, without. Um, actually, I think the chamfer actually moved it. Yes, so the chamfer will actually move it. But if it doesn't move, I guess that's that's what I'm getting at. So if it doesn't move, sorry about that. And you're just adding some loops here. You know, for example, and see now this this line has not moved. It's still a very straight line from point to point, and then this that just straightens it out. But see now when we subdivide this, we get these janky. See this janky kind of line, and 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 we don't want that. So I mean, you could, you know, you, know, you could have that in a bunch of spots, and before you know it, it just starts looking butt ugly. You know, that's not what you want. That's not a good modeling technique. Um, see now now we got these like. These almost fasted kind of faces, these flat faces, and 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 that's no, no good at all, you know. And I, I used to kind of do that in the past and kind of just roll with it when I could. But there's a lot better ways to do things. So, um, so we'll just wipe that away. And what I was working on when I kind of came across this, I was thinking about it, and I've avoided it. In the, I've avoided it in the past, but I thought about doing a quick tutorial on it because. Um, yeah, it's just been bugging me out, and this is for my own information as well. So, like right here, so we got these little notches here on this piece, and um, and if we were just to add our edge loops, which yeah, we'll add them here, we'll add them here, that's fine. We'll add one right here, that's fine too. You know, we'll add them, start adding them. But then we get to this point here where we wanna we wanna make this a nice square because if we don't have that, obviously we we turbo smooth this stuff. Um, you know, we just completely lost that nice crisp edge. And um, that's not good. So what we'll do here is um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so what we'll do here is so now the problem is so we need to add some edge loops right here, right? We need an edge loop here, edge loop there, edge loop here, edge loop there. But see now what we're doing is what I just showed you that cylinder. Now we're getting these crazy lines that are running down the whole um, the whole cylinder. So then, when we turbo smooth this stuff, you know we're gonna we're gonna notice those lines. You can kind of see them here creasing out. Um, and the and the more you you, you smoothen that out, the tighter it gets. You know, because we're adding, we're making this the cylinder uh, more round and more round and more round. And then these creases are just gonna stand out that much more. It's pretty much you're telling the model to say, hey, we need this really tight right here. You know, and and that's not how it works on the cylinder. We want this nice and smooth. See, so you can see this kind of squaring out. And it needs to be perfectly round, and, and that's something that's not good. We need to avoid that. So, how do we do that? And that's what we're just kind of coming across here. Um, so, and this might not be the 
the perfect solution, but um, it's a good workaround. The main thing when I figure about subdividing for a high poly, as long as you can subdivide and subdivide and subdivide and, and you're not, and the model looks good, might not be completely perfect. You might see some misproper shading, but you know, that's the idea is if you can if you can continue to subdivide a model and the quality still looks great, I don't think it really is a big deal if you have some, you know, triangle here and end on there. Um, you know, I always try and model in perfect quads, but sometimes like in this instance, like like I mean if you're baking, if you're if this was a low poly game model and you're gonna bake into it anyway, it really doesn't matter as long as you're getting a good high poly result. So if you got a few triangles, it's really not an issue. Um Especially with static, like hard surface stuff, you know, characters where you got animating, it's a little different. But um, so something like this. So what do we got to do? You know, what what can we do here? We want to create a nice uh, hard edge here, so this ain't rounding out and looking like garbage. So and then and then we don't want to ruin the rest of the model. So what we got to do is we got to use a cut tool. And I man, early in my modeling days, I never really knew the power of the cut tool, and this thing is just amazing. So um, what we got to do here and and, I, and at first I was thinking about like adding triangle there, but then that's too tight here. That's too tight where it's gonna kind of not give me what I want. So, so what I was, what I started to do, as I did a few minutes ago, um, we'll just square this out right here. So at least one, at least one line under where we're trying to make uh, the edge hard, um, we want a quad. You know that would be key. We want a quad there. So then we'll do it on this side as well, and we'll make a quad. Um, so then what we need to do here now is, um, actually before I do that, sorry, let's add our edge loop. We want another edge loop right here. So we're going to add that second edge loop. Now let's get cutting. Did that, did that not appear? There we go. All right, that was weird. All right. So um, so let, let's, get, let's get cutting again. So I start on this edge here. I'm going to cut this baby down, form a quad, and then we're going to triangle it out so same here and there might be a faster easier way to do this I, I'm not sure um, I was kind of researching a little bit and wasn't really finding much out there um, so sometimes you just got to get creative with this stuff and um, yeah there's a triangle there but will it really affect anything when we subdivide you know that's that's the the real question here you know is it really gonna affect the model um, is it gonna lose its lose its sexy well we'll see so all right, so we kind of so yeah, we got we got a pair of triangles here, but it's really not a big deal. So when we subdivide this now, um, yeah, we kind of we don't have like perfect round topology there, but does it really matter? Because now we subdivide this, and we could subdivide and subdivide, but now we got this nice clean, uh, clean edge here. Looks great. Um, maybe it's not 100% perfect. I mean, if you get in there, you might see a little bit of misshading. Um, but for the most part, I think that's that's pretty good, you know. And then we don't again, we don't have these long crease lines. Uh, down the cylinder that uh, that destroys the, the perfect smoothness the perfect roundness that we have here on the cylinder so um so that's a good workaround you know and, and a lot of times boxy objects it doesn't really matter but it's when you're working with cylinders i find um this stuff can really come into play so yeah i'm learning you don't want these long lines running through your whole model um because it'll just kill it um but yeah so i mean i think this is a this is a great solution here um, so that was just a quick thing I, I just came across a few minutes ago and thought I'd share it with you guys. Hope, hopefully that helps. It helps me a lot. Um, and thanks for watching. Take care.